Hi, this is Jabba here, and I'll keep this one pretty quick because other people will already have covered it, I'm sure. And this is looking at the decision of the European Court of Human Rights, which has somehow managed to determine that it's not free speech to insult Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, apparently it's fine to insult Jesus, but it's not fine to insult Muhammad, uh, based on... Uh, well, they never went as far as to, 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 to make a specification like that, but we know that I could insult Jesus right now and I would not get any hate speech uh, charges applied to me. It's like I could, I could perhaps say Jesus was a paedophile. Nobody's going to do anything. If I say Muhammad was a paedophile, nobody should do anything. Because based on many Islamic scholars and Islamic holy writings, that would appear to be a statement of fact. That he married a child and then had sex with, with that child bride. So, so, so that theoretically is not an insult, it's a statement of fact. It's not, it's not an insult. So, what's actually going on here? Uh, let's have a look at this. Now, this is a summary on West Monster. It's just easier than ploughing through pages and pages of... Um, you know, it would appear this is an Austrian woman. She was holding seminars on Islam. Exactly what is meant by seminars on Islam, I do not know precisely. And it appears that she was being a little bit too provocative with how she was phrasing uh, the, the, the whole scenario of uh, Muhammad marrying a child and then having sex with her. Um, or, as we'd say in modern parlance, raping a minor. And um, so here, here it is. She said the Prophet Muhammad liked to do it with children. And a 56-year-old and a 6-year-old. What do we call it if it's not paedophilia? And that is perhaps a little bit inflammatory but what is actually wrong with that the only thing that I could that, that I would perhaps highlight as being wrong is there's no evidence that Muhammad liked to do it with children it would appear that there's the one case where he married a six-year-old and waited until she was nine is the youngest age that's quoted, I believe, in the traditions uh, before he actually penetrated her. There's other people who say 12 uh, or 14, uh, but in modern Western standards, uh, that's still uh, fucking a child. And that, that would still be considered criminal. And so the point stands uh, I should perhaps clarify based on Sunni tradition the point stands that um, yeah, the Prophet Muhammad uh, is, is his example is not compatible with the standards of Western civilization and okay, right, right. Let's just let's, let's just keep moving on. Uh, I, you know, I think I think I've I've, I've thoroughly made that point um, because, like I say, um, I could say Jesus was a paedophile. There's nothing at all in any of the records in any of the traditions that would back that up. So that's an insult. Right? I say Muhammad is a paedophile. And that's not an insult, because according to the holy men and the holy writings of Islam, that is backed up. So it's not an insult, it's a statement of fact. See the difference? Now, here, despite the fact that's a statement of fact, I, that's been used as the whole pivotal point of this case. And... So she had already received a conviction and fine. I don't know precisely what that was. I'm assuming it was some sort of hate speech law. Um, 
They're saying that, that, that the conviction fine did not breach her right to free speech and that her comments were not objective or aimed at promoting public debate. Well, that's arguable. Um, because what what's she effectively saying then? Prophet Muhammad was a paedophile, debate me. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, it's, um, that, that's... That, that's um, this is all kind of like red herring stuff. This is all kind of red herring stuff. That's, um, now here is a particularly damning point that's coming from the European Court of Human Rights. Um, they said, so, so the ECHR said uh, that her comments could only be understood as having been aimed at demonstrating that Muhammad was not worthy of worship. Muhammad worship. So the point here is that according to the European Court of Human Rights, Muslims worship Muhammad as well as Allah. They don't just worship God, they worship Muhammad too. Now that is a bigger insult than the statement of fact that Muhammad fucked a kid. Surely that is a bigger insult. Is that Muslims worship Muhammad? Now I'm aware of the traditions that's like, oh yeah, he wasn't made of clay and all that sort of bullshit. See, why I'm saying bullshit here is because I'm not a Muslim. See, if I thought that Muhammad was worthy of worship, I'd have converted already and I'd be a Muslim. But of course, I do not think he's worthy of worship. That's why I've not converted. <laughs> you know, it's um... Okay, okay, now let's get on to... Right, they are carefully balanced her right to freedom of expression with the right of others to have their religious feelings protected. And the decision served the legitimate aim of preserving religious peace. And here's where it gets down to. Let's protect the feelings of the Muslims that's more important than someone's freedom of expression carefully balanced her right to freedom of expression this is bullshit this is pure bullshit see because the important part and this is the point of this entire ruling is the second part of the sentence that the decision served the legitimate aim of preserving religious peace in other words, they could not rule any other way unless the Muslims were going to riot in the streets. And they ruled to prevent the Muslims rioting in the streets, which was, therefore, they had to rule in favour of Islam, getting special treatment. And that's what this is all about. This is all about appeasing Islam yet again. And as, as Westminster finishes off here, allowing prosecution of those criticising religion is a very slippery, dangerous path to go down. And one has to agree with that. This, by any other name, is blasphemy laws being reintroduced via the back door of the European Court of Human Rights. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well done. Right, you know, it's, it's only taken centuries of warfare, millions of Europeans dying, to actually get to the stage where we were able to have freedom of expression, where we could insult each other's religion. And actually, all, 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 all that would happen then is, I'd insult you, you'd insult me, the next day we'd just, we'd, we'd just move on. But oh no, that's all going to change now. It's now it's all about don't upset the Muslim. And the problem with this is that this is grouping people together. So there's lots of perfectly peaceful Muslims who are now going to get caught up as this continues. And it's because it's a specific brand 
of Islam that is being used to um, fester and spread in Europe. And it just happens to be the kind that is violent. And that's what we're seeing time and time again right across Europe. And the people that you thought would uphold the rights have formally capitulated with this ruling. They have capitulated, they have shown their cuckery. They're demonstrating to the Muslims that are inclined to be violent that they now have a free hand. And if you thought we were fucked before, we're going to be even more fucked now. Anyway, I better shut up, otherwise I'll, I'll just start shouting and swearing an awful lot. But I think I've made my points right now, uh, so I'll leave it there, and I'll catch you next time.